What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about both silver and gold and how I've been using the precious metals and how I'm going to continue using the precious metals as a defensive play, especially right now when we're on the brink of the coming recession. We're technically halfway there at this point. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos, subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos, go and get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club for giveaways, live streams, deal alerts. You can watch Saturday and Sunday's videos right now if you want to. And of course, make sure to go and get your five free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Refer two friends by the end of the month and they're going to give you either a free share of Starbucks, Apple, or Google. Everything will be linked in the description. So today is Friday, May 13th. 2022. It's actually Wednesday the 11th as I'm filming the video, which means I have no idea what the spot price of silver or gold will be by the time this video comes out. So head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. So today I wanted to talk about the coming recession. This is something that a lot of people have been talking about for quite a bit of time at this point. And there are a lot of people out there who think that we are currently in an economic recession. No, we've retracted a little bit, but we're not technically in a recession. A recession, by definition, is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. And at this point, we recently learned that we're halfway there, which is what we're going to dive into in just one moment. I just wanted to point out some of what we have on display right here. We're going to be talking about silver and gold a little bit later in the video. I just wanted to show off what I have on display talk about the recession, and then move on over into the precious metal. So up there at the top, we have some 90% junk constitutional Washington silver quarters. Probably going to be the base of my stack if I continue hoarding these. This is going to turn into the foundation of my stack. Down here, we have some 90% junk constitutional mercury dimes, a crowd favorite. And I think there are some Roosevelt dimes mixed in there somewhere. In the center... At the bottom of the center, we have a Type 1, Type 2, Eagle, a Maple, a Kangaroo, a Britannia, and a 90% Junk Constitutional Franklin Half Dollar. Over to the side, we have a 10-ounce Bull Bar with a 1-ounce American Flag Bar on top. Over there, we have a 10-ounce Sunshine Bar with a 1-ounce Westminster Bar on top. And then, of course, we have some Fractional Gold. We have some of the beautiful yellow metal. We have a quarter ounce philharmonic, a tenth ounce philharmonic, tenth ounce maple, tenth ounce Britannia, tenth ounce eagle, tenth ounce Krugerrand, and of course a tenth ounce kookaburra. But what I wanted to do in today's video was talk about the coming recession, talk about how we are officially halfway there, and then I wanted to talk about how I utilize the precious metals as somewhat of a defensive play to keep myself afloat during rocky times. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was that we actually just recently got the data for the first quarter of the year. For those of you who don't know, GDP is what measures the output of goods and services in the United States for a quarter to quarter to quarter to quarter basis. So this is measured by three months. This is not like the CPI readings. This is not like the jobs reports. This is something that comes out every three months rather than every single month. And toward the end of April, some information was released regarding GDP for the first quarter of this year. We found this out the last week of April. I was aware of it. I did not get a chance to really deep dive into it. I didn't want to make a whole video just talking about a headline because what's the point of doing that when you can read a headline on your own? But I had a lot of stuff to take care of. Didn't get around to it, then I'm going to be honest, completely forgot. But I'm diving into that today. So analyst expectations for the first quarter of 2022 believe that we were going to see 1% growth in GDP. We were going to be up by 1%. As it turns out, we saw a negative 1.4% 
GDP growth in the first quarter of 2022. That's January, February, and March. We saw a decline of 1.4%. So that's bad for two different reasons. Number one, it's bad because you don't want to ever see negative GDP growth. But two, it's bad when analysts miss expectations. We don't like seeing that when it comes to inflation expectations. We don't like seeing that when it comes to jobs reports expectations. When there's a big miss, that's not good news either. But we did see a decline in the first quarter of 2022. Again, a textbook on paper recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. We just saw one quarter. And guess what? We are currently, at this point, halfway through the second quarter. April, May, and June. It's mid-May right now. We are quite literally halfway into the second quarter of the year at this point. And unfortunately, we're not going to find out until probably late July, if I had to assume, maybe early August, the GDP data for the second quarter of the year. We're not going to find that out until July or August. But right now, where we're at, middle of May, it's not looking so hot at the moment. And we just got the inflation report just a couple of days ago by the time this video is released. This one's coming out on Friday. We just got the inflation report Wednesday morning. That wasn't good either. We missed expectations when it comes to year over year, month over month, and core inflation expectations, a miss on all three. It's not looking so hot right now. Now, what's tricky about recessions is that Sometimes you won't even know that we were in a recession until after the recession is over. For example, we already know that the first quarter of the year we had negative GDP growth. Let's just say the quarter that we're in right now, by the time we move into the third quarter, we find out that the second quarter also had negative GDP growth. But the third quarter is when things pick back up and we're actually growing again. Now that we're in that third quarter and we found out about the second quarter, we say to ourselves, Wow, we were in a recession. I didn't realize we were in a recession. Nobody did because we didn't have the data. So you might not find out that you were in a recession until after the recession's even over. Two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth followed by a third quarter where things pick back up. But it doesn't have to go that way. It doesn't have to be just simply two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. It could be three. It could be four. It could be not just quarter after quarter. It could be year after year. We've seen that in the past before as well. And obviously recessions are not good in any way, shape, or form. But something else that I wanted to add onto that right there is the fact that during recessions, when we are in the midst of a recession, less people are working. We see heightened unemployment. We see spending on the decline when times are tough economically, when people are going through their own financial hardships, maybe they're worried about whether or not they're going to get laid off of work, or maybe they already got laid off of work, or maybe they're having a hard time finding a new job, not to mention inflation's on the rise. People are not going to be spending on non-essentials. People are not going to be burning through their cash frivolously. People are going to be going into retract mode. People are going to be spending less. People are going to be pretty much doing everything in their power to hold on to as much cash as they possibly can. So businesses are going to be taking a hit because of that right there. And because the businesses are taking a hit, that's probably going to lead to even more layoffs and even more layoffs lead to even less spending. And it's just this downward spiral until we get things back on track again. Obviously, a recession isn't good. Many people aren't even phased by recessions. A lot of people are, but a lot of people aren't. It's important to keep an eye out. It's important to look at everything that's going on. That's why I try to break down some of these reports. That's why I try to research as much as possible so I can come to a conclusion on my own terms and, and, and figure out a way to translate it in a way that actually makes sense to me and then relay that information on over to you watching the video. I try my best to do that. I don't know how good of a job I do, but it makes sense in my head, and I, I think I word it in a way that makes sense to other people. But moving away from the possibility or, or being on the brink of a technical on-paper recession, since we're not technically there yet, 
I wanted to talk about being proactive rather than reactive. When it comes to combating inflation, or when it comes to keeping yourself afloat during rocky times or recessionary times, it's one of the main reasons I started stacking silver and gold in the first place. You want to know why that is? It's because the silver and gold, the precious metals, the real true honest money, constitutionally recognizes money, internationally recognizes money, biblically recognizes money, real true honest money. They do a far better job holding their value. They do a far better job standing their ground than any currency out there. During inflationary times, we see that the purchasing power of the dollar bill diminishes. During recessionary times, we see that the dollar bill is taking some massive punishment. Silver and gold, on the other hand, I personally believe stand a far better chance of strengthening during weak times than the currency, which has proven itself time and time and time and time and time and time again every minute of every hour of every day of every week of every month of every year we see that the currency is on a decline it has proven itself to be the case there every single currency in the world has done absolutely nothing but get weaker over time real true money on the other hand i believe when the economy is suffering i believe when our currency is in turmoil i believe that the silver and gold stand tall, stand strong, and hold their own. Which is why I like the silver and gold. Because it provides, especially gold, during recessionary times, because gold really provides a lot of stability during times of economic instability. Silver does as well, but silver's a little bit more volatile. I think silver is a little bit better at providing us with growth opportunity rather than a sense of stability which is why i always say if you're stacking both metals simultaneously you're kind of getting the best of both worlds but that's pretty much what i do i utilize the precious metals i stack a little bit at a time i'm not going to the coin shop and and wiping out their shelves every week i'm not able to do that i don't have the currency to do that it'd be nice but i can't do that and i'm just going to go ahead and assume that most of the people watching my videos are just regular average Joes, working class people that don't have all the currency in the world, don't have millions of dollars or, or even thousands and thousands of dollars at their disposal every month. Some of us, maybe we got a, got a couple bucks, maybe we got a thousand dollars or two, just regular people. We go to the coin shop and we pick up a little bit of silver. Maybe we go to the coin shop, maybe we pick up a little bit of gold. We're not wiping out the shelves, we're not cleaning up the shop and, and taking the whole coin shop home with us, we don't have the currency to do that. But guess what? We don't need the currency to do that because we don't even need to do that in the first place. It's not about wiping out the entire coin shop. It's not about taking all of their inventory and, and forking over however much cash you need to do so. It's about small steps in the right direction. It's called the compound effect. If you do small steps in the right direction, eventually it will take you to where you want to go. Now let's just say you're getting started stacking silver. Today, you go to the local coin shop and you pick up five troy ounces of silver. Is that gonna save your life? Is that gonna do very much for you? Is that going to keep you afloat during recessionary times? Is that gonna store value and make you come out on top when it comes to all this inflation? Five troy ounces of silver? No, but guess what? What happens next week or, or, or next paycheck or next month? You go and get another five troy ounces of silver. Maybe next time around you have a little bit more cash on hand and maybe you get 10 troy ounces of silver. Then you get another 5 to 10 troy ounces of silver. A couple weeks after the get that, you get another 5 to 10. And sure enough, a couple weeks, couple months have gone by. Now you have a couple hundred ounces of silver or maybe, maybe a year has gone by and you have a couple hundred ounces of silver. And then what happens if another couple of years go by? Now you have even more. It's called the compound effect. It's when small steps in the right direction eventually take you to where you want to go. You just got to make sure that you're taking the right steps in the right direction. Because guess what? You can take the wrong steps in the wrong direction. And the compound effect is still the same thing. You can compound something in a bad way, just like you can compound something in a good way. It's like eating french fries, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. You're consistent. I can, I, I can appreciate the consistency. 
but that's small steps in the wrong direction, taking you to where you don't want to go. It's the compound effect no matter what way you want to go. I personally believe that the silver and gold, and by stacking the silver and gold, small steps in the right direction will eventually take me to where I want to go. That's just my opinion. That's from my perspective. I'm only documenting what I'm doing. It's obviously not financial advice. I'm not telling anybody what to do. I'm just telling people what I do. And of course, if you are in the Precious Metals VIP Club, you know that we talk about things during the Wednesday night live streams, other methods of combating inflation, other methods of storing value, other methods of having diversification when it comes to safe havens. There are other recession-proof assets out there. There are different types of businesses, different types of real estate, different types of stocks. We talk about these things in the Precious Metals VIP Club. So, friendly reminder, come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club. We talk about a lot of things over there that you don't want to miss. I go live for hours and hours and hours at a time. It's a lot longer and a lot more detail and a lot more one-on-one -on -one than just these 20-minute long videos. So, link in the description. But, when it comes to the silver and the gold, that's what I utilize the precious metals for. I personally believe that the silver and gold will come out on top. I personally believe that the silver and gold will absolutely outlast the dollar bill. I personally believe that the silver and gold will 100% outlast any potential recessionary time or, or any potential inflationary time. I think the silver and gold will come out no, on top no matter what. But that's just what I believe, and that's how I've been going about doing things for the last four and a half years at this point. That's roughly how long I've been stacking silver and gold for. I'm going to continue doing so. I've been doing this for, at this point, almost half a decade, and I personally couldn't be happier with the decision that I made starting about four and a half years ago. So I'm going to continue doing it. It works for me. It's been working very, very, very well for me, and I figure if it's not broken, don't fix it. So I'm going to continue doing what works. And little by little, I will be doing some trial and error to see what else works or, or what out there doesn't work. That way I know what to weed out. That way I know what to build up. That's pretty much the game plan for me. But when it comes to the stacking, for the most part, I'm going to stick to the 90% junk constitutional Washington silver quarters. I'll go after the 90% silver period, but... To really break it down or to be even more specific, it's probably going to mainly be Washington quarters. Those are the most common at my local coin shop, and the 90% silver is the cheapest kind of silver you can get at my local coin shop. It's a little bit cheaper than the generic rounds and bars and whatnot, so I figured if my main mission is to hoard as much silver and gold as I possibly can and pretty much do whatever I can to load the boat or back up the truck, but on a very small scale because, again, I don't have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to throw at my coin shop every day. I'll get a little bit at a time, even if it's a couple troy ounces of silver at a time. I'm going to work with what I have, where I'm at. That's just my way of going about doing things. But I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. When it comes to being on the brink of a potential recession. We are officially halfway there. We officially saw negative GDP growth in the first quarter of the year. Do you think that we're going to see negative GDP growth in the second quarter of the year? The quarter that we are already halfway through? Obviously, the inflation reports as of lately haven't been looking too hot. Do you think we're going to see negative GDP growth for the second quarter in a row, sending us into technically an on-paper recession? And then, of course, when it comes to the silver and the gold, do you view the precious metals the same way I do? Do you see them as somewhat of a safe haven? Do you see them as somewhat of a flight to safety or something that's borderline recession-proof? I, I can't even say borderline recession-proof because the silver and gold have survived and thrived during every single recession in existence. They're still here thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years later. So what are your thoughts on that right there? Is that what you utilize the silver and gold for primarily or are you using them for something else? Head on down to the comments and let me know. If you guys like today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Go and get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. 
got t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, coffee mugs, and a bunch of different designs. Many of the products are helping us raise some funds and awareness for different charity organizations, by the way. DYDSS store will be linked in the description. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club, which is where I do giveaways every single month, live streams multiple times a week, deal alerts on silver and gold almost every single day. You can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. You can watch Saturday and Sunday's videos right now if you want to. And of course, every Saturday morning, I post a brand new adventure vlog. I have a new one coming out tomorrow morning, so you're not going to want to miss that. And there are a ton of other perks as well. VIP club link in the description. I guarantee you the value exceeds the cost. And of course, last but certainly not least, make sure to go and get your five free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Normally it's two free stocks. They bumped it up to five for the next three days. You have until May 16th, three days left to get five free stocks. All you got to do is make a deposit of any amount. It could be as little as a penny and it still counts. You still get your free stocks. And of course, if you refer two friends to the app by the end of the month, you have about two and a half weeks left to do this. Weeble's going to give you either a free share of Starbucks, a free share of Apple, or a free share of Google. It's completely random. You get what you get and you don't get upset, but you win no matter what because you're still getting something regardless. So don't pass up on an opportunity. Weeble link in the description. Time is running out. If you don't want the stocks, go and get them anyway. They're free. Then just sell them. Congratulations. Now you have the cash to go and get you some silver or some gold if that's what you want. We will link in the description. And I want you guys to head on down in the comments and let me know once again, what are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? When it comes to potentially being on the brink of a technical on paper recession, two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, we're halfway there. Do you think we will go all the way there? Do you think we're gonna see another quarter of negative GDP growth? Do you think we are on the brink of an on-paper technical recession? And how long do you think that it's likely to last? And are you using the silver and the gold to prepare yourself for rocky times? Are you using the silver and gold for a sense of stability during times of economic instability and financial hardships? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.